Hey, good evening. Good evening. Sorry, this is Tim Ash, president of the Vermont State Senate. It is uh, Thursday, April 7th. This is my evening update on Vermont's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I've got two great guests tonight to talk about some of the challenges that um, our education system has faced as we've moved almost overnight to distance learning. And we'll benefit from hearing from one of Vermont's best teachers and also a great student about what it's been like on both sides of the education uh, ledger. Uh, before we get started, I just wanna um, say a quick update that while the governor has made some additional easing of uh, economic activity, uh, I'm gonna hold off on providing any substantial update until my week uh, sort of weekly wrap up tomorrow at 5.30 because there's going to be some additional guidance issued tomorrow about the restart of childcare facilities, summer camps, um, overnight camps, and possibly even how schools might um, successfully find a way to commemorate uh, seniors at the end of the year through some kind of graduation ceremonies or diploma ceremonies. So I'm gonna hold off on that till, till tomorrow. While it's all good news that we can have some additional engagement with our friends and neighbors, um, it's also worth noting that there were seven additional positive tests reported uh, in the last 24 hours. So it's this balancing act between um, slowly reopening things while also having our eyes on the public health numbers because we don't wanna find ourselves opening up too quickly and then having to shut things back down. So tomorrow I'll provide more updates on the governor's, uh, yet his new guidance from yesterday, but also what he's gonna be uh, uh, talking about tomorrow at his press conference. And I'll try to provide a, as good a summary as I can. But tonight we're gonna benefit from a discussion with uh, two people in the Winooski High School system. We have uh, Luke Dorfman, who's a teacher uh, at Winooski and Hussein Amuri, who's a junior at Winooski. So welcome guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm gonna start um, with a bit of a, maybe I'm gonna start with a question, Luke, for you, and then we'll we'll transition uh, to Hussein. So Winooski High School, you know, has a lot of similarities with high schools all over the state, but give us just a quick sense of, um, you know, what, what Winooski High School is like on a given day, there's students from all over the world, you know, what's, what's the normal, what's the pre-COVID-19 Winooski High School look and feel like? Sure, yeah, so um, Winooski is a really special community and it has a close place to my heart. Um, it is a remarkably diverse uh, community as well. And so, as you mentioned, we've got um, students and families from all over the world who are refugees themselves or um, immigrants. Um, and we've got just a really robust community of people who've been here for a long time. And um, yeah, so, you know, day-to-day -day life before this crisis, um, you know, had a feel of, you know, whatever we call the sort of normal school, right? Um, uh, we've got sort of a structured schedule, a block schedule to our normal day in the high school. And, um, you know, students kind of move from class to class. Um, we are, we have the privilege of being, you know, a single hallway. And so it's, it is a pretty tight knit community and we definitely benefit from being really small and getting to know our students really closely. Um, yeah, and then clearly things have changed pretty drastically since then. And so um, we're really excited to share a bit about the, the challenges that have certainly come up along the way as well. All right, great. Now, Hussein, you're a high school junior. Tell us what some of your, your interests are um, both in terms of school and extracurricular stuff like sports, what is what what are the things that you normally enjoy uh, at Winooski High? Um, I enjoy a lot of things, and I think one of the big um, you know favorite things that I usually do at school is writing. And I actually this past school year, uh, this, this actually this past um, this semester, I was um, enrolled in uh, a writing seminar class, and in that class, we were all writing. Um, a book actually and um before this pandemic began we're kind of you know like outlining we're all kind of you know outlining the you know chapters of like where we were going to be writing uh again it was a mystery book um it was based in Winooski and that was you know really great actually because you know I kind of you know got to write something that was that I knew from my from my perspective living in Winooski um 
But I'm also kind of, you know, um, a community engagement type of person. I love, you know, engaging my community, doing a lot of stuff, helping out. And actually, um, in this during the semester, I was enrolled in a classroom class called um, the Culture and Community Classroom Class, which actually Mr. Sir Dolphin is one of the teachers that teaches that class. And uh, in that class, I was um, I worked with the Winooski um, Chair Commission, um, trying to advise the City Council in kind, you know, changing the charter and allowing non-citizen people in Winooski to be able to participate in local elections. Something that was, you know, really, you know, touching and good, you know, mainly my mom's an immigrant. She works two jobs and, you know, I would love to see her have a say in where, you know, her money goes and where, you know, um, her, her, you know, taxes goes because, you know, she has two, she has two kids attending, you know, Winooski. And, um, yeah, but I'm also, you know, a big soccer fan, so I play soccer at school a lot. Um, yeah. So you've got, you play sports, but really dive into the uh, school material uh, and a bunch of community activities. So pretty well-rounded guy, sounds like. I appreciate it. We'll learn a little bit. We'll learn a little bit more. Sometimes resumes can be deceiving, but, I, um, but we'll, we'll talk a little more about that. So Hussein, you know, one of the things that we all were experiencing back in the beginning of March was seeing in the news COVID-19 in Europe and in Asia. And then we started to get the sense that it was gonna come uh, to the US and, and here in Vermont. At what point as a student, did you start to realize that something may change for you at school? Um, I think like it was during, um, uh, um, actually I got the news from some of my friends that there were you know, kids at Rice who went to a field trip in Italy. And when they got back, they were kind of you know, ordered to be quarantined. And, you know, when you know, I first found out that I was, you know, things are going to, you know, be changing a lot. And actually, the, I think, I don't know, it was this week. Oh, having a little, little challenge on the volume, Hussein. All right, well, let's hold off on Hussein for a second, see if we can get the volume worked out. Uh, Luke, as a teacher on your side of uh, the equation, what was the moment where you realized that normal classroom teaching might not be long for Winooski? Yeah, so I mean, I've been following certainly the news globally, you know, since December, January time. And then uh, really once it's the reporting um, and the coverage started to focus in on the US um, and, you know, more and more information around testing and just the numbers and kind of, you know, a lot of the projections and modeling, once that really got going, um, I quickly gained the sense that, you know, you're gonna be impacted in some way and still really unclear about, about like what that would look like. Um, and then it really was, you know, as we entered March, um, conversation and certainly sort of like the uh, hum in the air, like it certainly started to elevate in terms of like, oh, well, things actually could really change and look a lot differently really soon, a lot sooner than maybe we had been, uh, had been anticipating. And, um, and then certainly once the governor started putting together a task force, like we knew um, at that point, you know, we we're gonna be taking steps um, and making some significant changes. How much, how much preparation did teachers have for the concept of distance learning before COVID-19? You know, had there been enough work in advance so that when the declaration came that schools were gonna close in mid-March, it was almost like you just took the plan and went with it, or did you have to really spend a couple days on overdrive trying to figure out how you were gonna translate your curriculum over into a distant learning uh, model? Yeah, no, it definitely, you know, I think overdrive definitely feels like an appropriate word. Like it, it was um, very abrupt and, um, you know, we had to really change things within a short period of time. Um, and, you know, over many years, right, a lot of teachers and educators have been transitioning and sort of experimenting with online learning and, you know, using digital platforms. So uh, it definitely varied teacher to teacher in terms of comfort and familiarity with how to make that shift. Um, but I would say the biggest challenge really is just in terms of the systems and structures in place. And, you know, so there wasn't necessarily a coherent plan that we were just like turning to um, and, you know, using kind of seamlessly uh, instead, it was just a lot of decisions having to be made really quickly. Um, and so with that obviously comes a lot of challenges when you just can't necessarily get the feedback that you're looking for from a variety of different stakeholder groups. Um, so yeah, the shift was, was pretty challenging. And, uh, and did you, 
Did you need to know, did you need to know which students had which technology to be able to uh, have continuity in their education plans? You know, how, how, how is it, you know, I, I can't imagine every school has a total understanding of what every household's like, but how did you know how you were going to best meet each kid's needs once they got home? Yeah, well, we definitely relied on a lot of our existing structures and just knowledge and familiarity with families. And um, so certainly drawing from that base knowledge, um, you know, we sent out surveys. So the district's definitely um, quickly put into place uh, some outreach efforts to families to really learn what are their needs, how can we be supporting them. But um, even still, like from from understanding and gaining that knowledge to then being able to act on it and, you know, bring those services home to families that needed it. Uh, there's still plenty of time between those two two moments. And so, um, you know, I'd say just uh, needing to be flexible and adapt um, and just continue to revise and um, evolve our plans over time has been a really big part of it. Great. It sounds like the relationship you already have with students helps you anticipate what's going to what's going to work for them. Oh, yeah. Hussain, Hussain, have we figured out your audio yet? Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you now. So what we're from a student's point of view, you know, schools officially closed, I think, on March 18th. It was a Wednesday. I might have the number wrong, but it was definitely a Wednesday when it closed officially. What were the first few days like when you were not going to school anymore, but you were at home and wondering how we're going to happen from there? What, what was that like? Um, I think for me, the big thing was kind of, you know, trying to get all my work done because, um, during that time, I, I, I you know, kind of received quietly, you know, a lot of work from, you know, my teachers uh, and um, not to mention, I was actually, I was actually, you know, kind of doing a lot of, you know, class projects, which are final projects, like, you know, I myself have, have, you know, to defend in front of a committee and kind of, you know, trying, you know, my best, um, you know, navigating how am I going to, you know, meet the requirement, you know, when I'm not with my teacher, um, you know, I did a lot of, you know, you know, creative, creative activity things where, you know, I will kind of, you know, you know, kind of, you know, schedule, schedule my day, in, in, you know, in a way that, you know, allows me to um, be able to contact my teachers and ask them questions. Uh, I was also very confused, not confused, but I had a lot of questions, actually, about what was going on, okay, how long was this class, okay, um, what is, what is, you know, what are some, you know, the things that, you know, the, the governor or, like, the state is doing, kind of, you know, about, and with those kind of questions, you know, contact my teachers, you know, and ask them, ask them. And, um, you know, I did that for quite often, kind of just, you know, put myself in a mood where I was, you know, always comfortable and was not terrified like most people. And, you know, I mean, it helped, but, um, you know, the crisis is still going on, and then it's still on, and, you know, people are still suffering. But I guess, you know, I'm, I'm you know, you know, holding on to my family, my friends, and, you know, my, my community, and that's helping a lot. Well, you're, you're, you sound like you adjusted much better than most people in Vermont. Um, were there any changes that um, didn't feel so good in terms of, you know, being isolated from your friends, not being able to get outside, do things like that? What, what are the downsides that you've experienced, if, if, if any? Uh, I think kind of, you know, kind of, um, I think being here has kind of, you know, put us in a situation where I'm not, I'm not very, like, physically engaged because being, you know, um, this, you know, before the pandemic, I was very engaged with my coach, my my track coach on a lot of, you know, um, running activities and kind of, you know, um, you know, working, you know, um, um, you know, getting in for the season. And I think, you know, when this pandemic began, I kind of, you know, lost that, you know, touch with my coach. I mean, I would still, you know, talk to him over, you know, Zoom or like emails, but, you know, I, you know, I missed his guidance and I missed him, you know, him talking to me, running with me, kind of, you know, showing me how, you know, how do you probably run a 15, you know, 100 race in a track, you know, kind of, you know, um, um, experience how do you do that and um you know it, it didn't feel as good as you know just talking to him over the phone or just you know getting him getting him you know sending, getting his messages over my phone and uh, how does great. it how does it feel to not have a track season to lose that you know junior year track season it, it, it feels terrible um you know i'm a very athletic guy and you know um you know, sports means a lot to me because it's kind of you know it's my way of making friends it's my way of you know representing my community on those, you know, big soccer games or, or big, you know, track days. Um, and uh, it's my way of, you know, staying in touch with, you know, who I am. And, you know, I feel like I lost that that big part of me when, you know, all this was canceled. Um, 
I actually, you know, got an email of, uh, you know, a couple of days ago from our athletic, athletic director about, you know, how, how the season is, you know, it's finally canceled. Uh, spring season is finally canceled. And that was a big hit. Um, you know, I miss my friends. I miss, you know, being able to compete. I'm, I'm, I'm a competitor, you know, but I don't do it, you know, for, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a competitor because, you know, I love competing and, you know, it feels good. Uh, it feels good, you know, you know, pushing yourself. And I feel like I lost that. Yeah, I can imagine. I've, you know, I often run on North Avenue in Burlington. So I go by the athletic fields and this time of year, they're normally full with whether it's track or uh, softball or baseball, um, lacrosse, you know, and, and right now it, it's totally empty. And so I think back to my high school when I would have been playing baseball right now and how much that meant to me. So I totally understand why it feels like there's something missing, you know, it's the big so, loss. yeah. So Luke, in terms of teaching, you know, our educators, I think, you know, most of us, I, hopefully all Vermonters, but most Vermonters at least are really appreciative of how quickly educators and school staff have converted over to distant learning and also trying to meet kids' needs in other ways, which normally are in the school, but now it's like having to go out into the community. In terms of the actual experience of distance learning, you know, there are some people who sort of say, oh, well, this proves that online learning is basically the same. Um, I have my, I'm a traditionalist, so I have my doubts about it, but what, what's been your sense of whether you and your peers, not whether you've been doing your best to, to adjust, but, but is, what's the experience like from a quali quality point of view? Do you, do you think that this is something that if it was to continue on well into the next school year, it would really be a disadvantage to current high school students? Or is it a situation where it's a different kind of learning, but it's of equal value? How, 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 what's your reflection on that? And what, how would you sum up the way your uh, peers at Winooski High feel about it? Sure, yeah. I mean, certainly speaking from um, my own perspective, um, it, it, is, it feels very much not the same. You know, I, I um, really do, I have been, I've been noticing a lot of the inequities that, um, so I feel like this, this crisis has certainly surfaced and really brought to the forefront. Um, and so when I think about the struggles of different students and families in terms of accessing technology, or when I think about our families um, who aren't native English speakers and suddenly there's so much communication being thrown their way and they're struggling to make sense of it. And our homeschool liaisons are doing their very best to be supporting those families, but there's still just a lot of information um, you know, we've definitely seen the tremendous gaps in terms of who, who's able to access our learning opportunities. Um, and so that's, that's been a real struggle. And so that's just been one big thing when it comes to distance learning. Um, and, you know, I think some of my other reflections on our current situation are that uh, what this has shown me, at least, um, is just how much uh, learning is all about relationships. And it's, it's, it has a very much a social component to it. And we're leaning really hard on those relationships right now in terms of just maintaining connection and uh, bringing, you know, making connection sort of the, the top priority is just continuing to have relationships with students and checking in with them. Um, and, you know, in, in terms of my own practice and sort of the sort of side effects of this crisis in terms of how it's really forced us to rethink our own approach to instruction and assessment and things like that. You know, I think it's really raising a lot of questions around what's really important when it comes to teaching and learning. Um, and so in that way, I, you know, I, I hope there are some lasting positive effects from this experience in terms of uh, really bringing to the front, um, you know, the skills and knowledge that we are really hoping to develop in our young people um, and not getting so caught up in things that are, that are less important. Um, no, it's well put. And it's, a uh, you know, there's always these attempts to sh change the way we educate and value different outcomes differently than maybe uh, had been done in the past. And it's probably we'll always be doing those kinds of reflections and rethinking of how we deliver education. But I think you're right that this is probably the first time in, in, you know, in modern Vermont history where the relationship piece really gets put to a different test and we get a different sense of how important it is to be with one another. And, you know, 
the legislature hasn't met in person since March 13th, wow. Friday the 13th, I have to remind people. And, and we are still conducting business remotely, but I would be not honest if I said it was the same. It is different. Um, you can't, you can't reach that same understanding that you gain when you're both talking and kind of being able to give a knowing look to someone or expressing that you under, you really understand what they're saying or conversely that you have no idea what they're saying and uh, the need for that continued engagement. Hussein, you, you, you're a sharp student, you're working hard, you've kind of quickly transitioned to try to make the most of a very difficult learning situation. How, wh- how do you think your classmates are doing Um, obviously some students react differently and maybe it's easier for them than others, but overall, do you think your classmates are wishing they were back in school to be in the presence of their friends and the teachers? Um, do you think that they're getting the same type of education through their computer screens than they would if they were in person? How do you see it? You know, um, to tell you the truth, I, I see it differently, um, to, um, actually, um, a couple of days ago, um, I had a friend, um, who called me actually and asked me to help him out with, you know, some of the school work that was, he was getting from the teachers and, you know, help him out how to use, you know, Zoom. Um, and this is a very, you know, issue that we have in our school where, you know, kids are struggling to kind of, you know, be able to communicate with teachers, even though they're trying their best to communicate with them. They don't know how to, okay. You know, I'm attending all these zoom call classes with my teachers and you know half of the students that i know from you know school are attending okay and it's not because you know they don't want you but like they're having difficulties you know i'm you know i'm on snapchat sometimes you know checking with my friends and i'm seeing some of them crying actually on you know on saying how they you know they miss school so much and they wish to go back you know i see them you know posting you know photos of their friends from, you know, before this whole pandemic began, of, you know, kind of, you know, just reminding you know, us how, you know, how different we used to be before, we, you know, we got, you know, we got into this crisis and how they wish everything was back to normal. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of, you know, my peers are adjusting very well. And those, those you know, can, that, be, that is because, you know, the inequities that Ms. McDuffie talks about, you know, are very, you know, are very, you know, pre- present in Muno Skin co- compared to, you know, some of the communities that we know in Vermont. And um, that's, that's it's a big issue, and I think you know it's one that we you know have kind of you know to tackle. But I think you know our school administration, our school system, is doing a phenomenal job, kind of you know being there for you know everyone, even though you know we are having difficulties. Well, it's it's an interesting um, test of our long-held belief that our public schools are one of the great equalizers. They provide an opportunity for everybody whether they have a lot of money or they don't, or their, you know, skill sets that they bring to school, whether they're strong or weaker students, um, whether they like sports or they don't, whether they're into theater or something else, or they like extracurricular clubs, they're there for everybody. And right now they're not, I mean, they're, they're of, education is available, but our, our schools aren't available in the same way that they always are. And I think it, as you say, Hussein, it points out, it, it points out some of the underlying inequities in our society. And um, if we had to continue this way, it would be to the great disadvantage of those who aren't familiar with technology or have the resources to have that at their homes in a convenient way, or who don't have a family member or a sibling who can help them out uh, easily. And that's gonna be one of the things that I worry about over the course of the summer is making sure that if we there, there's going to be some uncertainty heading into the fall. I think we all hope school will open the way it normally does, although I'm sure we'll be taking some additional precautions. But we'll want to make sure that if we, for some reason, have to have kids back home, that we don't have some kids not with the equipment and ability to hit the ground running when we come back, because we can't let people miss a few months of two years in a row because of you know lack of uh, access. So Hopefully we'll do a good job there. We've got a couple minutes. Couple minutes left. Let me um, let me ask you each a, a, a final question. And Luke, I'll start with you. So we're now almost two months into uh, distance learning at Winooski High. Um, you and all your peers have had to figure out how to 
connect with kids, make sure they're getting all the material, do Zoom classes, do all the stuff you're doing. Any particular memories or things you look back on already and say, wow, that was a, that was a moment where we figured it out and you know, either one of my students did something that really stood out or one of my coworkers did something or one of the school staff or administrators, any, anything that stands out already. Yeah, sure. I mean, a few spe uh, specific moments come to mind immediately. You know, when I think about the culture and community class that Hussein was talking about um, earlier, uh, just uh, it, it's a capstone experience. So it's one of our graduation requirements. And so, uh, you know, for a lot of our students in that course, especially our seniors who are quickly approaching the end of their high school career, um, we've really had to assess and, and make some modifications or provide different sorts of support um, and I have just been completely blown away and amazed by how so many of our students have kind of adapted their projects um, and they are um, their community based projects right their their intent is to get them connected to their community and then here we are in this crisis where they're suddenly so isolated and seeing how some projects in particular um, one student comes to mind where she um, has been involved in uh, food insecurity as sort of the issue that she was really exploring. She was connected with the uh, Vermont Food Bank and did some um, advocacy work in Montpelier earlier in the semester. And, um, you know, she had done such a robust project. We are like, don't even worry about it. Put together a final presentation and we'll just um, call it, you know, you've done more than enough there. Right. And, um, and she just took it upon herself. She's like, no, this is a real issue affecting our community right now. And um, so she had connected with our district leadership and was asking like, is there any way for me to get some money so that instead of uh, just having food distributed to families, we can bring uh, seeds and soil home to those families as well so they can start growing their own food. And uh, again, this was just totally something she um, took it upon herself to pursue. And um, it's just taking her project to this next level and talk about impacting your community in a positive way during a time where all of us are really struggling and, to, and grappling with that very question um, has been so inspiring. And again, that's just one student out of many. Um, that's a, it's yeah. a great story. And I'll just, before I ask Hussein a version of the same question, the day before the state house shut down, there were, there were Winooski high school students down at the state house advocating for uh, more support for uh, programs that provided local produce um, through the Vermont food bank and other uh you know, food organizations like the Chittenden Emergency Food Shelf, which is now called Feeding Chittenden. And I don't think any of us appreciated when they were sitting in my office that just a couple weeks later, we would be talking about the need to greatly increase on an emergency basis, the number of local food that was getting out to our neighbors. So uh, if you can tell them that I have not forgotten that meeting, and it was a very, uh, very powerful message that they delivered, and it, it proved to be very timely. Hussein, you know, you're um, on the student side of it. Um, any any uh, particularly memorable moments from the last two months as you've shifted over to distance learning? Um, I think it's... Uh-oh. No, no. Uh -oh. There we go. Hussein, we're not hearing you right when you were gonna tell us something uplifting. <laughs> Oh no, I'm gonna have to have you back in order to tell you that I can't end on a, on a, a tech fail. Um, give it one more shot, Hussein. See if we can hear you. Hello? Yes. Um, I think like one of the memorable things that, you know, kind of, you know, happened to all of us um, in, you know, especially in one of my custom class was how, you know, a lot of my peers were kind of, you know, um, you know, terrified about, you know, how I'm gonna, you know, you know make you know our final presentation for a capsule you know be you know be more memorable and um you know we were all afraid you know how we're gonna be doing that but i think you know um i was very you know happy when you know we all said you know we you know we're gonna try our best and commit the project that we chose and when you know do our best you know to make sure that everything you know goes fine even though we with this you know with um with this you know pandemic you know in place you know the mentality that you know everyone showed um, the, um, the love and hope that everyone, you know, put into their, you know, um, learning was just amazing and was something that, you know, I'm going to be, you know, you know, keeping my mind, you know, forever because that's, that's all you need in this type of situation, you know, the mentality of saying, you know, we got this, 
we can do this and the mentality of saying, you know, okay, no matter what happened, we got each other and yeah. Well, that's a great uh, way to go out uh, on our conversation uh, on a hopeful note. And uh, it's a pretty inspirational to hear both from your point of view, Luke, on the teaching side and your peers about how quickly you've, you've adapted to meet kids' needs uh, and make sure they continue to learn in these last few months of the school year with so much uncertainty and anxiety. And Hussein, it's pretty inspirational to hear that you and your, yeah, your fellow students are stepping up to make it work on your end, because um, I know that it's, it is a huge shock to the system to have to go from a routine of five days a week in the school with all the faces and sights and sounds, and then suddenly you're kind of trapped at home and at just a time you want to be getting out in the warm weather and kind of living up the end of a school year, which is always kind of a special time. So I want to thank you guys both for joining me and providing some insights uh, to people around the state about what it's been like on in our public high schools uh, over these last two months. And for everyone else watching, uh, I'll be back tomorrow at 5.30. And just a reminder, I'll be doing a, basically a weekend recap, focusing on yesterday's announcements by Governor Scott about additional economic activity and recreation. And then also uh, some anticipated announcements he will be making tomorrow related to childcare uh, and also camps, summer camps and things, because we know that right now some camps are closing pre, uh, proactively. Um, but they're going to provide some guidance about how they could be conducted safely uh, moving forward. So hope everyone continues to stay safe and I'll see you tomorrow.